This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. We'll transform this armchair with new decorative fabric from Sailrite to give it an updated stylish look. In our previous video tutorial, we showed you detailed steps to reupholster the frame with new fabric. In this video tutorial, we'll show you how to sew the chair's removable cushions with brand new decorative fabric from Sailrite, completing this reupholstered chair project. The first portion of this video tutorial will show you how to make the seat cushion. Then after that, the backrest cushion. Here's Cindy, an expert seamstress and upholsterer to show you how it's done. I'm going to put the cushions back in the chair now that the chair is all finished and make sure that the cushions fit properly before I cut new ones. And if there's anything that I need to change, I can make note of it now. So the main thing I want to check is make sure that these corners look good and it actually looks a little deep. There's a little too much sticking out here. So I think I'm going to um, make a note to cut this edge about a half an inch shorter than it is now. So this fits more squarely onto the chair. So to remind myself, I'm just going to make a line right here. So I don't forget when I go to cut my cushion. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good. And the front of the cushion is broken down. It's very squishy right here. and. Uh, that's not going to be very comfortable. So after we get it apart, we're going to look at it inside and see what's going on in there and why that needs, why that happened. Cindy's going to start with a seat cushion. The foam on the inside of this cushion is covered in fabric. First, we need to remove the foam from the old decorative fabric. We need to inspect the foam, so the fabric cover needs to be removed from the foam. In most cushions, the foam is not covered in fabric as it is here. Because it feels like there's something going wrong up here in the front, we're going to open this up and look inside and see if we can repair that rather than replacing the whole cushion. Often when pulling foam from upholstery applications, it's sometimes a surprise to see how the cushion was stuffed. For this cushion, the creator used polyester batting for the cushion's tee or ears. If I were cutting foam for this cushion, I would cut the foam to include the tee ears instead of pushing polyester batting into the void. However, this does work, so don't rule this approach out. As you can see, the foam was wrapped in polyester batting. This gives it the rounded look that is often desired in an armchair or sofa cushions. When we open this up, the foam doesn't feel any softer at the front than it does at the back. So I think the foam was worth keeping and it looks like it has just slipped. So what we were feeling at the front of the cushion was all of this. So we're going to tighten that up so that the core of the cushion stays at the front of the chair and reuse this foam. Cindy has opted to reuse the foam that is wrapped in batting and also the polyester batting for the T ears so she will restuff the foam into the foam's fabric cover. Since the foam slipped back, she will address that by stuffing the back edge with more polyester batting. That's coming up. So I'm just pushing these pieces back into the T part of the cushion so that they're nice and snug. And we may have to add more to these after we get the cushion back together just to give it a little more life. Since we moved that foam up and got rid of that real squishy part at the front, now it's at the back. So I'm going to push this all snug in there and cut a piece of this Dacron and fold it up in there to take up that extra space and prevent the cushion from sliding back again. It appears that the foam for this cushion was cut a little too small for the cover. If we were cutting new foam, it would be cut to the correct size, so we would avoid having to stuff the back edge as we are now. With that said, 
It's amazing how a cushion can be brought back to life and modified by stuffing it with batting or fiber fill. Cindy now checks to be sure all areas of the foam seem filled appropriately and that there are no bumps or humps that need to be fixed before closing up the fabric cover. In preparation for sewing the cover closed, she uses pins. I need to sew the core back up so that my stuffing stays in. Since this cover will not be visible once the cushion is done, a simple straight stitch along the edge is all that's required to close up the cushion. If your cushion will not fit under the arm of your sewing machine, this can be hand sewn easily. Now when I make the new cushion, I am just going to tear apart the old one and use it for my pattern. We are looking at the inside surface of the old decorative fabric cover. And I only need one piece, so I'm going to use the piece that I already put the mark on. So I don't actually have to take the whole thing apart. Using the top plate, the one piece, we can make a pattern from that. Okay, there's my top piece. And because I want to make this that much shorter in the front, I'm actually just going to cut this off right at this seam, which will make it a half an inch shorter. I want the flower to be centered again on this piece also. So I'm gonna fold this in half so I can see where the center is. And I'm gonna leave it like this when I cut it. That way I can fold my cut piece this way and then I have identical sides. To make patterning easier, she will pin the top plate in place over the new decorative fabric. And I'm also going to put a couple of pins right here where my fold is, so that when I flip it over I have a, a, uh, a mark of where the center is. Now I'm going to cut around the original cushion, uh, cutting along this line because I want it to be a half an inch smaller, and only cutting this half of it. Now I'm going to remove the pins. and remove the pattern and fold this over until I reach the point where my pins are and that's my halfway point. So I'll put a few more pins in it and cut the other half. There's one side of our cushion. This right here, you can see where the old cushion was curved up. I'm gonna try when I sew my cording on to keep that as straight as possible. That shouldn't be that way. And when I cut the next one, I'm gonna cut that straight across there. I'm gonna cut my second piece and I want it to be um, opposite the first one. So my corners are the same. So I'm not gonna lay it right side up. I'm gonna lay it right sides together. 
and make sure that my pattern falls in about the same spot. And everything's smooth. I'm adding a little bit to this one underneath because I don't like the curve of that one. I don't want that to be curved in the front when the cushion is made. So I'll compensate for that by stitching the cording a little closer to the edge there, and this one I'm adding to. We did not disassemble the boxing, sometimes called banding, on the original cushion, so we would just take some measurements off of it. I'm ready to cut the boxing for this cushion, so I'm going to measure from the seam to the seam and see how big it is. It's five inches. So I would like to cut my boxing at six because I like to allow for a half inch seam. So I'm gonna cut it six inches wide. And this measurement is just a rough measurement um, so that I get it the right length. measure to about the center of the front and then double that so it's 48 which is 96 so I'm going to cut my boxing at 100 inches so I have plenty in the zipper I am going to cut at about 20 I'm going to cut it at 27 to give myself a little extra length it's easier to put the cushion in if it, the zipper is longer so the zipper pieces will be 27 inches long and four inches wide, and I need two of them to make each half of the zipper. I add an inch at this area to turn under to hold the zipper in place. So that's how I come up with the four inches. It's two inches bigger than the band. The boxing, that's six inches. First, I'm gonna cut the zipper plackets and we don't need to worry about pattern at all in this because it'll always be at the back of the chair. No one will ever see it. So I'm cutting off the selvage edge. And I'm going to measure my 27 inches by four. and I need two of them. Now to make the boxing for the front of the cushion, I'd really like this flower to match the front of the chair. So I'm gonna measure the width of the front, which is about 31 and a half. And I'm gonna put a pin in the center of this and then I'm going to come back here and find a reference point along here that I can mark on my fabric over here and I'm going to use the the bottom of this leaf right here as my reference point so when I cut my band it's going to this leaf is going to be included in it only it's going to be coming up this way so if I use that reference point, which is right here, I'm going to put a pin right there, and then when I cut, I'm going to cut a half an inch down so my seam ends up right there, and it matches right there. So this flower will continue right up the front of the band. And I can line that up by putting another pin or using that as my guideline, a half an inch down from this one also will give me a straight line across the fabric. Please excuse the background noise. That's our 50 foot plotter table as the vacuum sucks the fabric to the table so the plotter can make its marks and cut the fabric to the appropriate size for sale kits. So I don't have this leaf again over here, but I do have that little dot on the fabric in the flower and I can lay my ruler at the same spot over here and make sure that my line is still straight. So 
So I'm going to cut my boxing at six inches wide and my ruler is six inches wide. So I can just draw a line above that. I'm going to square up this end. And over here, I'm using the bottom of that little dot to line up with the bottom of that little dot and keep my line straight going across the fabric. Now, I do still have my center pin in there, and I want to leave that there because I want to make sure that this piece is long enough to go all the way around the front and around the corner before I put a seam in it. I don't want a seam in the front or on the side. So since I have plenty of extra fabric up here, I am gonna seam this instead of cutting it all the way down the width of the fabric. So I'm going to check this real quick and make sure that it is how I want it to be and see how it continues, the pattern continues up the cushion on the chair. So now I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces to add on to each end so it's the 100 inches that I need. We already cut the two zipper plaques. Next up, we will sew in the zipper. I'm going to apply the zipper to the zipper pieces right now. So here's my two four inch pieces that are about 27 inches long. And this is where I allowed for the one inch uh, extra length. So I'm just gonna pin that down at an inch. And I'm gonna do it to both sides. Now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and stitch with the edge of my foot right up against my zipper teeth all the way down to the end and cut my zipper off. So I want to line the fold of my fabric up along the center of the zipper teeth. And then this edge of the foot is going to run right along this ridge of the zipper. We are sewing a straight stitch about three to four millimeters in length here. I'm going to just trim my zipper off at the end of the plaque. And I'm going to attach the other side the same way. Butting the two fabric pieces up next to each other. So the zipper is attached to the plaque and we've got plenty of extra fabric there so that's not going to pull out and this should be six inches just like our band. Now I'm going to put the slide on and I get it started and pull the zipper apart on both sides, move it down a little bit more. And there's your slide. This is the piece that I cut for the band, and it's not quite long enough. We wanted that to be about 100 inches, so I'm adding a piece to each end. And I'm just going to straight stitch along that seam on both sides so that it's long enough to go around the cushion. And this is uh, just about half an inch seam is fine for this.
Next up, we'll sew on the piping. How to make your own piping is found in the previous video showing how we recovered the frame of this armchair with new decorative fabric from Sailrite. We will sew the piping slash cording onto the top and bottom plates. I'm going to apply the cording to the cushion with about a half an inch seam all the way around. And when I come to this corner, I'm going to snip right up into the stitching. Not snipping the stitching, but right up to it. And stop with the needle about a half an inch away from this edge. Since the cording was cut on the bias, it should go nicely around this corner without making any snips in it. And when I come up to this corner, I'm going to snip again. get up close to where I started I'm going to go about three inches beyond the end of the other one cut it off and open up the stitching so that I can pull that back and cut the welting off even with the first part. And then I'm folding that on the bias. You can fold it on the bias or you can fold it back straight over itself. Folding it on the bias leaves less bulk right at this point. And then just wrap it around and finish stitching this row. Uh, the cording is all on this piece and we just have to do the other piece the same. The process for the second plate is the same. Let's move on to assembling the plates and boxing. Cindy will lay the top plate on the chair to determine where the flower on the boxing should be positioned. Well, because I want this to, the band, the boxing to match on this, I'm going to lay my cushion piece right on the base of the chair and make sure that my flower lines up with this flower on the chair and pin it in a couple spots so that when I sew it, I know it's in the right place. So if I put a pin there in the center that matches the pin here and make sure that my leaf is also matching up. Then I know that that needs to be sewn with these two pins in line. It does not look like the pins are directly across from each other in this the video, but they pin. are. When the cushion is finished, I should have these leaves still matching and the flower still matching. Next, she pins the boxing to the top plate with outside surfaces facing each other and the bottom edge of the boxing towards the back, as shown in the video. So when I take it to the machine and start sewing, I'm going to sew this first so that I know that it's in place and then sew that around the rest of the cushion. So here's where I've pinned it, and I'm going to just sew from here to here. The Sailrite Ultrafeed LS1 is a great sewing machine that is excellent for upholstery applications like this. It has a cording or piping tunnel built into the standard walking foot. So 
at this point I've only sewn across the front of the cushion so I can take it back to the chair and make sure that it matches here's the leaf that I'm matching make sure that it matches on the chair I've just laid the cushion top onto the chair and if I lift it up where it will be when there's a cushion in it I can see that I'm really close so I'm ready to sew the rest of the band all the way around the cushion and apply the zipper in the back I'm going to clip the corners of my boxing just like I did the corners of the cording so that it'll go around this corner nicely. going around the, the curve, the in inside curve of the cushion, and uh, it's just a matter of going slowly and moving your, your boxing over a little bit to go around that curve. This piece is going to be too long and that's okay, we'll cut it off after we apply the zipper. So I'm going to stop sewing about five, six inches back from the corner so that the zipper will go in there and we'll finish that off when we put the zipper in. To sew the opposite half, Cindy flips the assembly so she can sew the other half of the boxing to the plate. So this time, the boxing will be on the underside as it is sewn onto the top plate. When a corner is reached, the needle is positioned at the corner by rolling the balance wheel over by hand, then burying the needle in the fabric, lifting the presser foot, rotating the fabric, then lowering the presser foot and continuing to sew. Now when I get ready to put my zipper in, I'm going to fold my cushion in half at the back and put a little clip to mark the center. And I'm going to do the same with my zipper. match up my clips at the center and sew my zipper in along the back edge. This end I can clip it and go around the corner. But not stitching it all the way to the end. I'm just going to stitch about an inch down the corner. Now because this piece is so long, I can fold it back and I'm going to trim it off. And stitch these two seams together, or these two pieces together.
and that will leave a fold to protect the end of the zipper. I also need a little scrap of fabric. that I'm going to lay right over the bottom of the zipper to stop the slide from coming off the end. That'll stop the slide from coming right off the end when I unzip the zipper. Now that's too big and that's where that fold goes inside there which keeps you from seeing the end of the zipper and it protects the end of the zipper from opening all the way up and breaking. So we're going to start back at this corner where we stopped and stitch that fold right into the seam. There's your back one of your back corners. We'll do the same process on this side. Stitch up to the corner and down about an inch and then attach this longer piece to it. So here's my boxing piece that was way too long and I'm going to trim it off leaving a um, overlap here again to protect the end of the zipper. And stitch this seam at about a half an inch. Push my zipper pieces right up next to each other. And I'm going to lay another scrap piece of fabric over this to protect the end of the zipper. finish up this seam leaving that fold in there that will protect the end of the zipper when the zipper's opened. Next up we'll sew the bottom plate onto this assembly. Before I sew the other side on I am going to fold at my corners so that I can make a mark out here where the corner on this one needs to hit when I sew it together. So I'm going to do the front corners matching these two seams up so they're aligned and making a clip here at the two front corners and the two back corners. Now I have a reference point as I go around to make sure that my corners are going to come out square. So I start in the back. In this clip that I just made, I'm going to lay right on this corner. And start stitching a few inches back.
Here's where the fold is that we put in to protect the end of the zipper. We're going to stitch that fold in on this side also. And here's the clip that I just made, and you can see that it's falling right at the corner of my piping, which is exactly where I want it. I'm going to stop now and pull this back and check and see that my clip is falling at the right spot, and if it isn't, I can ease or tug a little bit on one of these pieces to make sure that it does fall in the right spot. It looks like my clip is just a little bit longer than I want it to be, so I'm going to tug on the underneath piece to make it match up a little bit better. Here's my fold on the other side. On this one you can cheat a little bit to get your clip where it needs to be by folding the fold a little bit more or a little bit less. And I'm pulling it a little bit more. Great job! All that's left for this seat bottom cushion is to stuff the foam inside the new cover. That's coming up next. Unzip the cover and turn it right side out. We have nice square corners that match up. And there's the seat cushion. So you can see where our cushion will match when we put the form in, and this flower will be complete on the front of the chair. Stuffing the foam in the cover is a tedious job that does take a little time. We will show only portions of this. Once the foam is inside the cover, work your hand inside the corners to push everything into place. Now you can see here I have a little bit of a flat spot and I want to fill that corner out right there. So I'm going to use the fiber fill. And Put it in the areas where I want to fill out corners. Sayerite sells the fiber fill in large 10-pound bags. 
It is perfect for jobs like this, but it's also great for throw pillow stuffing and more. Very fluffy cushion. You can see how when we took that half inch off, this sets back a little bit nicer to the edge of the chair. The seat bottom cushion is done and looks great. Up next, the back cushion. The process is almost the same, except that you will notice that the boxing is only on the bottom edge of the cushion. Along the top edge, the plates are sewn together. So let's quickly show how this is done. The cushioning on this one feels pretty good. I don't think we're going to have to do anything to it except maybe fill the corners out after we get it sewn. So I'm going to um, take the core out and take the cushion apart again. There it goes. You can see that the boxing for this cushion is a little different than the seat cushion was. Uh, it does not go all the way around the cushion like the first one did. We have cording around the top of this one instead. So um, I'm going to leave that as one piece for right now until we get ready to cut it. This cushion has these little tucks at the top corners. So I'm going to take the stitching out of those also so that we can replicate those in our new cushion. Cindy has removed the stitches from the boxing and the plates so she can now pattern from one of the plates and the boxing. With this piece we can utilize this flower that's at the bottom of the fabric because this part of the cushion is going to curve over the top so even though it looks like it's kind of far down on the cushion when the core goes in here it won't be it'll be centered where it should be so I'm going to fold it in half again to find the center of my flower so that my seat and my back will match up when folding the old fabric in half to use as a pattern, it's important to pin it to the new decorative fabric to ensure that it does not move and also that it's folded so the edges are lined up accurately before cutting. I put a couple of pins here in the center so when I fold it over I have a reference for the center of my flower and the center of my pattern. And I'm just cutting along the lines of the old cushion. And I'm going to fold it over on itself again and find my pins. and cut the other half of the cushion. I am going to cut a mirror image of this one and put right sides together, making sure that my flower is centered. Once that's done, she'll cut the second plate from the first plate. Since this cushion does not use boxing along the top and sides, we will sew the pleats in and then sew the plates together with piping. The first step is to sew these little corners back in. These corners, or pleats, are on both the top and bottom plates. She will pin them together, then sew them together. We will show only sewing one of the four corners. The stitch should be about a half inch away from the edge, as shown in the video. This cushion is constructed a little different than the last one we did. 
The cording on this one is applied around the top only. We're not going to put cording on here yet. So that's what I'm going to do right now is apply this cording around the top. The cording, or piping, was made when we covered the armchair, wooden frame, and fabric. If you need to know how to make your own piping, refer to that earlier video. And trim it off here at the bottom of the seam. Now I'm going to sew the front and the back of this cushion together. So I'm going to put it right sides together. And match up my bottom edge. And stitch around again over, the, over where I just stitched the cording in. And these two little cuts that we made should match up at the top. I'm going to check those again and make sure they're pretty close. It looks like I can tug on the top piece a little bit to get this one. It's a little bit long. So I'm going to tug on the top piece so that the foot pulls the bottom piece under just a little bit faster. And I have my hand underneath here to help push that under faster. If I wasn't trying to move that faster, I'd be holding them together. Because I want to ease this a little bit, I've got my hand underneath. I'm going to apply the cording to this piece instead of the band. Uh, there's a little bit more leeway in the band than there is in the cushion, so if anything is too big, I can adjust it here, or too small, I can adjust it with this piece rather than on this piece. So I'm going to take the cording off of here and use this pattern, but when I put the cording back on, it's going to go on here first, and then we're going to stitch this to this. Cindy is removing the piping slash cording from the end section only, so she can use that as a pattern. I'm going to measure the size of the zipper, so it needs to be about 22 long, and it's finished at 4 inches. So I need to add a half an inch for each seam and then the 2 inches for the center, so that is 7. So if I divide that by the two pieces, I need three and a half inch pieces. Three and a half by 22. This piece of the boxing, I'm going to just cut out just like it was cut out the first time. Only I'm going to make it longer so that I can make that little fold at the end of the zipper like I did on the seat cushion. And that's where you get a little bit of play. If it's too long or too short, you can work with it there. And I need two of those. Since the zipper is at the back of the cushion, we're not concerned about where the pattern lays, since it will not be visible. I'm cutting my two 3 1⁄2 by 22 inch pieces. These two pieces will make up the zipper plaque. On this one I'm going to fold in an inch again and apply my zipper along this edge.
putting the slider on as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to tug on each side until the zipper opens up a little bit. And then it'll slide right down. Now I'm going to apply that piping to the outer edge of this cushion. And notice that the salvage edge was left on. Cindy would not use that edge as her guide, but instead the printed edge of the fabric to sew the piping slash cording in place. And clip it at the corners. When she reaches the top edge where the previous piping was sewn in place, she will sew this piping right over it and continue on. Now when I get up to where I started, I'm going to leave about three inches beyond, snip it off, and open up the stitching. And pull the fabric away so I can snip off the extra cording and then bring this back around and fold it at an angle and tuck the beginning part back in and stitch it closed. Now all we need to do is join all the assemblies together to form the casing of the cushion. Now I'm going to attach these two boxing pieces that we cut to the zipper. These are positioned on the end of the zipper plaque with outside surfaces facing each other and a stitch placed a half inch from the end. And add my little zipper stop in as I do that. These boxing ends may be too long, but that does not matter because Cindy will be able to shorten the length when they are finally sewn to the plates in a future step. We'll show that coming up soon. I'm going to fold this in half and mark the center of the zipper on each side. And I'm also going to fold these in half and mark the center at the top. This clip right here will meet where this cording comes together and I'm going to mark clips at the bottom of the cushion for the clips at the center of my zipper. So I'm going to lay the zipper, the center mark of the zipper, at the center mark on my cushion and stitch along here. Notice she is sewing only the zipper plaque section. The other parts of the boxing will be sewn later. Cindy has left the salvage edges on some of the panels. If that confuses you, I suggest you remove them before assembling the cushion sections. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the zipper seam first before I go around the ends. <clears throat> now to do the ends, I'm going to match this seam right here up with my cut. And I'm going to sew from here and around and finish this edge. And then I'm going to come back and sew from here and around and finish this edge. Now make sure that this curve 
is in the right place on both sides and it's even and balanced. to go around the bottom corner. Well, I'm gonna have to undo that a little bit because my zipper's longer than it should be. So I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna clip it so it will go around the corner and end the zipper up here. The other option would be to trim the zipper off a little bit shorter. the finished corner on that side. Now I'm going to come back up to the top and stitch down the other way and then this corner will be finished. Here the boxing is on the underside. Previously it was on the top when we were sewing the other side. As discussed earlier, this is how the boxing can be reduced in length by creating a tuck or fold when sewing it to the plate. All that's left for this back cushion is to stuff the foam inside. The cushion cover is turned right side out. And this cushion is finished. Ready to stuff. The cushion bottom and now the cushion back is now complete and ready to be placed on the armchair. Feels pretty cozy. The armchair is now reupholstered and the cushions completed. Coming up next is the materials and tools that we use to make this chair's cushions. You will find hundreds of great indoor decorative fabrics at Sayerite that work great for jobs like this. You can also find the tools at Sayerite that we use to make this job a great success. If you would like to see how the chair's frame is reupholstered, just click on the image here to be directed to that video tutorial. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.